Hello and welcome to the Interpreting Wine Hospitality Podcast with me, your host and podcast founder, Lawrence Francis. Welcoming you to this series celebrating the category of sherry. Released during Sherry Week 2019, this series will transport you to the region via conversations with Senor Beltran Domecq of the Consejo Regulador and winemakers and owners of several bodega houses in the region. Sharing this information in podcast format, a first for the region, these nine episodes will bust some myths about sherry that still exist in the marketplace and educate and attract a whole new audience of sherry drinker. So without further ado, here's today's episode of the series. Today's episode of the Sherry Week series features Sherry Bodega, Williams and Humbert. In a first for the podcast, today's episode features two interviews recorded at two different times in two different countries. We hear first from Paula Medina, winemaker at Williams and Humbert, in an episode recorded in Jerez back in May. We hear her origin story before she gives us a deep dive into sherry production via the soil and talks climate change. Immediately following this, we'll hear from Edward Butler, regional sales manager. He talks the history of the Williams and Humbert brand, talking rum the current state of the sherry market before getting into a couple of examples of their more premium lines. Enjoy. Uh, I am now in, in Williamson Hamlet. I am the technical director. I am also the winemaker and the master blender. Uh, I study uh, chemistry in in the University of Granada, and then I study enology in here in in Cadiz. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Also, I have another master's degree uh, that I did in I study in Madrid. Mm -hmm. uh, so finally, with <laughs> all these things. <laughs> uh, uh, I am the responsible uh, since uh, the harvest to decide the moment of the harvest working very close with the responsible of the vineyard uh, till the aging of the wines hmm? uh, of Jerez and also uh, another line of work another product is the uh, spirit drinks like the rum, uh, dos maderas, also the brandy, uh, Duque de Alba. So all the process uh, involved, no, uh, uh, to work with the complex uh, system of the solera san criadera, mm -hmm. with the sherry wines, with the brandy, with the rum, and also we have the particular uh, sherries that is the vintage sherries. Mm -hmm. So that is the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> more or less the, the resume, no? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And um, I mean, it's you know, it's super interesting, you know, to, to be here and to to be in in this place. And I, and I, you know, I'm I don't feel qualified to really describe the the landscape ahead of us. So I think you know, maybe for the listener who can't see this, give you know, give them a sense of where we are and, and what we're looking at here. No, we are in. In, in Jerez, in the Sherry area, mm -hmm. and we are in the area that we call Jerez Superior. Mm? Mm -hmm. That means that we are in a, in a triangle between Jerez, eh, San Luca, and El Puerto de Santa Maria, and in this triangle eh, we have the eh, most important terroir eh, where we eh, cultivate the vineyards. Mm -hmm. mm? We are now in the vineyard of Dos Mercedes. We call Dos Mercedes. It's a vineyard that are located in the uh, Carrascal uh, terroir. Mm -hmm. Is um, one of the most famous uh, terroir that we have uh, here in Jerez. We call Pago. Eh? Mm -hmm. In Jerez, uh, the terroir is the is the Pago is very peculiar because uh, the quality of the wines uh, here is uh, very interesting because the wines that we produce from this terroir is it has 
more fruity note, more structure, mm -hmm. and it's the classical terroir, no? That we can find in the interior area of the sherry area. Mm -hmm. This vineyard uh, is uh, it has the highest uh, altitude, and we have uh, around uh, 100 hectares. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The grape that we have here uh, in close uh, in the right, we can find the Palomino grape. It has around uh, 15 years, but we have also on the left a very very old vineyard that uh, um, exists since uh, 1964, and our special wines, the the vintage. Uh, sherries uh, comes from this vineyard uh, and another project. Uh, mainly we have a uh, palomino grape but we have also organic grape and in this case is Pedro Jimenez grape. It's not very usual to have here because normally the production of the palomino uh, of the Pedro Jimenez grape here in Jerez is uh, very small but we are working to increase the the surface to obtain more Pedro Jimenez and also to um, improve no and increase the organic production mm -hmm. of the of the grape. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean it's um, it's super interesting for me because I know in the market in London, I know that the you know a lot of the things you've already started talking about there are are super interesting and, and what people look for you know they, mm -hmm. they do look much more for you know a sense of place a sense of identity um, in what they're drinking you know they, they really want to feel as though there's a yeah, no, something yeah, bottled yeah, you know so, yes. this so, is the identity yeah. of the wine no yeah, yes yeah, of course, you know, yes no this is a, a very peculiar vineyard because um, is a it's like uh, our baby. Mm? Mm. Uh, our philosophy no, is uh, to work uh, with this vineyard, those Mercedes, but also we have another vineyard. Uh, it's in another terroir, it's Anina, it's very close to here. And we multiurate, we press the, the grape in, in Anina. Eh, in, in Las Conchas eh? the name of this vineyard Las Conchas is because uh, Conchas is a shell mm? and is because the origin of uh, our uh, we call Margas the origin of the soil no? was a shell mm -hmm. no? the, is mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. evolution and the degradation of the mm -hmm. shell of the sea Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We work with the Anina uh, vineyard and the Carrascal uh, vineyard and our philosophy is to work with the uh, vineyard that are close to uh, our place mm -hmm. to decrease the distance to uh, send the, the grapes to the place of reception and also to control you know, how the the supplies works mm -hmm. with with the mm -hmm. with the vineyard. Mm -hmm. So it, for us, it's very special you not know, to 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 work in 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 a Carrascal a terroir and in Anina. That is why also we uh, beneficate mm -hmm. the wine in. in in a separate way to identify the character of the wine of each mm -hmm. uh, terroir, and but also uh, we can we continue no to mix the different grapes with the different vineyards mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. but the the main thing is that we can obtain in in a, in an individual no way yeah. the, the information of uh, each vineyard. So for yeah, us, yeah. Ab yes. absolutely, and uh, you know, I think I think the, and it, to me, it's it's not to say, you know, I, I never like to say that one way is better than the other, it, it, because you you often have, you know, a certain. Um, leaning on on one side, you know. Sometimes you do want something that's that's no, more. I think the best is to have information. Yeah. Uh, if you have a singular information, mm -hmm. you can complete and have a, 
a global uh, point of view no? at the end and to, to obtain more conclusions and to work in the in the way that we consider that is uh, the best no for sure. for the sharing no because we are always thinking about the the sharing and the future no not sure, only sure. the present and what is the new what is the uh, please can you show me this thing or the other thing what is the new project that we have we we need to work with the head mm. and also with the heart no mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but always thinking in the future mm -hmm. we, we we need to think uh, with 30 years ahead I think when when you start to talk about the future and uh, I think it's a, you know the appropriate point to, to kind of leave it but I, I always think as well to climate change you know the, because we're seeing we're seeing more and more climate change so I'm just wondering yeah in this you know, we're here in May it seems like it's it's a, it's a very warm May that we're having. I'm just wondering, that may, maybe a slightly longer term, you know, what, what is climate change doing to you and how is it affecting your job and, and how are you adapting to that? Um, a few time ago, I was thinking, no, that is only a, a punctual, no? A moment or sporadic situation. But um, at the end, it's true that... Uh, uh, we start the harvest uh, before than another mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. and that means that the the vegetative cycle no mm -hmm. it's short shorter than in yeah. the past yeah. no yeah. Uh, but at the end we we know that the quality of the wines uh, and the grape is okay mm? but we know that there is a change that we have a longer period with high temperature and uh, now for example today is too hot you know but uh, it's a typical weather in, in May you know? uh, we have here the Poniente we have the Levante now we have Levante it's too hot it, uh, 33 Celsius outside, the, you know? mm -hmm. uh, but for the moment we uh, can't uh, forget that it's true, there is a climate change and the thing that we have to be present is that uh, the Alvariza mm -hmm. is in is in the same place, we can move the Alvariza to another place with less temperature, mm -hmm. uh, more humidity, it's impossible, no? Mm -hmm. uh, I think with the time, the, the vineyard can adapt it to this change and uh, we need to... Uh, or control. The word is not control, no? To adapt, mm -hmm. to, for example, start the harvest in the correct moment, hmm? Uh, of the maturation and everything, but it's true that uh, the climate we feel that we have more largest period of with the high te temperature. No, but for the moment we don't feel that uh, we have a significant uh, change in the wine. Hmm? So I got into the sherry trade by complete accident, really. Um, it wasn't intended. Um, however, my father was born and raised in Jerez um, uh, from a sherry trade family. Um, and he um, moved to uh, back into England. We were a, um, a, a British family, but having been several generations uh, in Jerez. That's very common, actually. There are a lot of, if you look in the, the Jerez uh, telephone book, there are a lot of uh, British surnames like they are in Oporto and other other places around Madeira um, so um, he moved back to the UK after being born and raised in in Spain and he started a, a wine company and um, that flourished for for some time um, and um, uh, I was born and raised in the UK I married a Spanish a Spanish girl um, and I was working in the city for a few years and um, we wanted to raise a family so I thought it would probably be better to do something else than, um, than working in the city so uh, 
Uh, I found a, a job in Jerez, was working for two or three years doing something completely different, um, and then um, fell into the sherry, sherry business again. It was, um, um, I've, I've, I've worked for two sherry companies, and then uh, I moved to Williams and Humbert ooh, about 14, 14 years ago, um, and I've been there ever since, very happy and, and working very hard. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that really struck me when I was down in Hareth is, is the history, you know, the history of the production methods, the history of the, of the houses down there. And I, and I think what would be really, really great for me and for the listener is just for you to share, you know, what is the history of Williams and Humbert and kind of, you know, bring us up to date in terms of that brand and, 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 and their products. Yeah. As you've seen, um, Williams and Humbert is, is a British company mm. set up in 1877 um, by Arthur Humbert uh, and Alexander Williams. Alexander Williams was the, the wine a winemaker who was uh, very interested in Hereth Sherry's, and um, he married Arthur Humbert's sister. Arthur Humbert was a financier who had um, the money, so they got together and set up a, a Sherry Bodega now is called Williams and Humbert. Um, they uh, registered um, from the very beginning. They wanted a, a, a global company, so they registered in eight, in, in 1906 the brand Dry Sack um, and launched it in um, uh, sort of in, into the worldwide markets. Um, it was a very very big brand um, uh, up until the the late 70s, mid 80s. Um, one of the sponsors of the 1974 World Cup finals in, in Germany. You can see it on the, <laughs> if you YouTube those old games, you can still see Dreisack on the, on the side of the pitches. <laughs> um, but uh, the philosophy of, of, of Williams and Hummer has been um, to produce um, excellent quality sherries uh, into the global market and very much was uh, uh, one of the companies in, in the the early globalization era uh, selling their products through i think we're now we're in over 86 86 countries um and um we've now branched out into into other products um using specifically with 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 our rums we've always done brandy we have the the brand gran duca de alba which is a household name in in spain in spanish brandies um, but with our, our recently launched rums, recently in the last 15 years, um, the, the, um, the, uh, the now owners of the family, the Medina family, um, who are a, a Jerez-based family, um, the younger generation now have wanted to, to, to move the company into other, other areas as well. So, um, but using the tradition of, of sherry, so uh, now we have a rum which is aged um, in our very old Palo Cortado sherry, the Dos Cortados, and our very, very old Pedro Jimenez, which is the Don Guido Pedro Jimenez. So we're using our sherry to uh, springboard other, other products as well. Um, so um, our main focus is, is, is now really sherry, brandy, and uh, spirits. I mean, I have, you know, very recently covered rum in, in its own series on the podcast. And so I'm very much tuned into what's happening there. And I, I know that for rum producers, you know, in, who are making a, an artisanal product, if they talk to the finishing style, you know, whether it's finished in port or if it's uh, finished in Pedro Jimenez casks, um, that, that that sort of really, you know, adds a lot. And, and, it, and is it, I think, quite intriguing to people that know a lot about the rum. So I'm almost interested to do the reverse and, and, you know, to get you to talk a little bit to that rum that, that's going into those casks, you know, what, what is the sort of production around that? And, uh, you know, how is that linked to the rest of the operations? Well, the, um, uh, the idea with, with the, the rums um, was really to use um, a, a product that's, that's on the market now in the spirits, in the spirits um, industry, um, but adding something unique to it. What could, you know, there's no point I was just introducing a rum and trying. Is what was the unique selling point that Williams and Humbert could add to, to, to a rum? Um, so after many years of, of, of experimentation, um, 
we um, ended up with um, uh, uh, a bass drum from Guyana and a bass drum from Barbados. Both of them, this is our, our main product. This is, um, um, so we have um, a blend of those two rums, which are aged in their respective countries, Barbados and Guyana, for five years. Then they're blended. Then we bring them to Jerez, back to our bodega, mm-hmm. and uh, we age for uh, three further years in our casks of uh, our 20-year-old Palo Cortado, called Dos Cortados, using the Criadera and Solera system. Mm. Uh, and then um, we have our, our first rum, which is what we call the 5 plus 3, the Dos Maderas 5 plus 3. We call it Dos Maderas because it's the woods from the Caribbean um, married with the woods from, from Jerez, mm-hmm. um, with the two cultures from both areas. Uh, so we have what we call the 5 plus 3. So it's five years Caribbean, yeah. three years Jerez. And then for our, our, our most popular rum, we um, take that rum, age it for a further two years in our casks of our 20-year-old Pedro Jimenez, which is called Don Guido, um, again using the Criadera and Solera system. Uh, so that rum passes for a further two years, and then we have what we call our five plus five. So it's it's really <laughs> it's um it's really so it's the five years Caribbean, three years um, in the Palo Cortado, two years in the Pedro Jimenez, yeah. and and that is that is um, our dos maderas five plus five. And I think for me, the, the the sort of burning question there is then around who's buying those d- different products because yeah, on the face of it. You know, quite a different crowd. So, you know, the rum crowd and the and the sherry crowd are, are, are probably quite different. But you know, is it a case of then people are sort of being you know drawn in by the sherry and the and the history and they're and they're essentially then more open to trying the rum because it's got that sherry influence, or or might it be the other way around? You're actually attracting a you know a rum audience, and then they're thinking, okay, if I like my rum in these sherry casks, and maybe I should just try the sherry without the rum. Well, if it, <laughs> the last part was, was what, what I find and what we, we find is, is actually happening, especially attending a lot of these now very popular rum fests that are going on in Berlin, in Paris, uh, in London, um, and in, in uh, Scandinavia as well. Um, but it is, it's, it's, it's um, as you said, in, it, it's exactly that uh, people who are whiskey and rum drinkers, they tend to be the same sort of set. But uh, especially with, with us, Lawrence, we have um, because I, I often, in, in order to sort of demonstrate how we how we uh, produce the product, I have a bottle of the Dos Cortados and a bottle of um, uh, Pedro Jimenez of the Don Guido with with us to to so that people can taste after they've tasted the rum, so that they know the elements of the of the product. And uh, invariably, they end up buying uh, <laughs> a lot of Pedro Jimenez <laughs> because they, they've never been introduced to, to, to sherry as, as they're generally more younger, younger generation of, 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 of rum drinkers. And um, they fall in love with, uh, with uh, the Palo Cortado and the, and the Pedro Jimenez. Um, and we find that um, I find a lot of people, are, um, uh, especially with our with our the people that we work with internationally, our, our customers, when we uh, that they they begin to order sherry, and then, and one of our spirits importers now orders uh, quite regularly Palo Cortado, Amontillados, Olorosos, and Pedro Jimenez, just because of the the introduction of the sherries with um, with uh, with the rum. So it's um, it's opening doors in that direction as well, and a lot of people um, um, who are interested in rums become interested in sherry because that's part of the elaboration process. The same as now, I think more people are becoming more and more aware of um, um, in the whiskey um, uh, industry. People are becoming, and, and the cons- consumers as well, are becoming more aware and want to know more a bit about. The sherry casks, the, you know, they're they're often um, um, said. Oh yes, we have. You know, this 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 whiskey is aged in sherry casks. People want to know which sherry casks, why that one, and who is it from. Um, and Williams and Hammond has a big part of our our bodega is given over to aging rums, um, aging casks for the whiskey industry. Mm-hmm. 
um, and that's becoming more and more uh, an important part of the of the uh, the bodegas business as well. So yeah, much as we love rum on interpreting wine, I think let's bring the conversation back to sherry. So um, yeah, I want to keep it fairly broad as a question and just really ask you to give us a bit of a, an update and I guess a, you know your perspective on yeah really the state of sherry um, through your lens. You know who's buying it. Uh, what are the sorts of products that they're asking for and how are you potentially anticipating future needs? Um, well, Lawrence, we're, we're, um, uh, the sherry market at the moment is still um, in a bit of a downturn. We've been suffering a downturn for, for quite some time as the, the um, other products come into the market that people are, are interested in, new, um, uh, new wines. The whole wine world has, has really exploded since the heydays of, of sherry. Um, but there's, there's still a very um, uh, good specialist market in sherry. People know what they want. They know quality. Um, and uh, we've really seen uh, um, a continued strength, especially with our premium and super premium products. And I think other bodegas have as well. That's where the main um, interest and, and markets are for sherries. There'll always be the supermarket sherries. Um, um, that's that's part of life and we we serve that and we're we're happy with that um but the um, where we see movement and interest really is in the the premium and, and super premium uh sides of the business um and that's where we've been concentrating our our efforts in um we also have now um um paula who who um who you've met and spoken to um, she's um, produced um, a, a range of vintage sherries, which um, we're very happy with. Um, it's um, a very, very small market, but it's growing. We're in um, some of the best restaurants in, in Spain. And uh, we started to um, very gingerly e export um, uh, to other countries. We're in from the UK to Australia, but very... Very, very gingerly, because these um, uh, sherries are in uh, fairly short supply. What what we do with um, our vintage sherries, we have um, uh, single vintages. Um, Paula and her team select the best vintages of the year and um, they place into casks in, in rows of, um, say, 28 to 34 casks in a row. There's no criadera and solera. It's all what we call static aging. So the, the wines are put into the cask. Um, if they go to finos, they are 45 to 15 uh, degrees alcohol. Um, uh, then we wait for the, for the, the spores of the, the yeast to, to, to produce. And that um, 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 occurs over a, um, uh, some period of time. It's not like the scriaderas and soleras where the, the, the fino goes into the cask which already has a layer of, of yeast. Um, as this is static aging, the, the wine will be exposed to the air for about six months before they're fully covered by the layer of yeast. So you have some an initial... Um, uh, oxidative aging in the in the wine, uh, so when you do um, uh, try it, it's, it is slightly slightly oxidative, um, but very very yeasty. Uh, then those evolve uh, will evolve into amontillados, uh, and then we have the olorosos, uh, which are, are fortified at the beginning to over sixteen and a half degrees so that the layer of yeast doesn't form again static aging we just leave them in the cask some produce palo cortados we have vintage palo cortados um so it's um and it's very very um curious because you never know what's going to happen i mean paolo when you speak to paolo it's 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 the the wines are evolving and each time we do a we do a saca um, the, especially the finos are uh, slightly different because they're always evolving through time um, and also with the amontillados and olorosos there'll always be a different nuance in the flavors and, uh, and uh, the aromas as the, the wine ages through time so each saca there's something to talk about 
I think what you've spoken to there is really quite remarkable in, in terms of the history of sherry and, and, and maybe people's perception around sherry, you know, and, and, and that there are new techniques and new approaches being used on a, you know, a sort of a, a regular basis, really, to, to, to open up new markets. And I wonder, you know, what I think would sort of really bring that to life for me, though, is to maybe, you know, talk to a specific product, you know, if you if from, you know, from your range, maybe, you know, pick out one bottle that, you know, it, it represents you potentially as a bodega doing something different. And that that has, I guess, led to rewards and, um, and has potentially opened up new markets further down the line. Yeah. Well, um, there's several um, labels and brands that we could uh, talk about and each have had a specific story. But one, one that um, quite a recent one that, that uh, springs to mind is, is our um, As You Like It. Uh, it's a sweet blend of Amontillado, medium sweet sherry. Um, I could, that, that, that has a, a, a story to it, Lawrence. We were um, our UK importer, the, um, the son of the, the owner of our UK in, importers, um, gave me a call and said, Edward, let's walk around the bodega and let's see some old bodegas and old uh, casks that haven't been touched for a while and let's see if there's something we can bring out to the market that's, that hasn't been uh, uh, around for a while. So I thought, okay, well, let's, let's, let's go through. And we, I spoke to the, the cellar master and, and um, he said, oh, well, go and try some of the old casks of, of As You Like It. Um, I said, well, that, that's that's literally a, a sherry that was put aside um, around 30 years ago, where um, where when the bodega moved from the centre of the town uh, in Jerez to our um, purpose-built bodega on the outskirts, um, all the old sherry casts and old wines were supposed to be blended together and and put together just to simplify uh, the move. But the cellar master had um, decided to keep this old sherry, which was a, a very, very widely available sherry and very, very popular. Um, um, it was just 27 casks left, and he decided to, to keep the Criadera and Solera going. Um, so we went over to the, this small area of the bodega where the casks were, and uh, we tried the, the sherry, and it was, I have to say, absolutely incredible. Um, it's a blend of uh, Amontillado sherry, um, a touch of Pedro Jimenez, and a touch of concentrated grape must. And those have been blended into the wine at the beginning. And because it had been taken off the market for around 30 years, it had just been going around the Cria de Ransolera in a closed circuit. Um, so the wine has been aging and aging and just going through its own career. So the blend is incredible. Um, and uh, we decided, look, we have to relaunch this back, in, back into, the, into the market. It has its sister sherry, which is um, um, called The Winter's Tale. So it has a, um, a very nice British uh, name to it and ring to it. So... Um, uh, we brought it back into the market. It, it, um, it's, it's. Um, I would say the the wine. It could be classified as a VORS, which is a thirty year old. But we haven't done that. We, the the wine is good enough as it is, um, and um, we've um, uh, launched it onto the market, and it's been remarkably successful um, in in um, high end uh, shops and and supermarkets, and it's been a uh, a great success and it's been um, uh, launched in other countries as well and it's um, it's small quantities because that's only what the, the Criadera and Solera allows but um, in very successful volumes for what the Criadera and Solera size is so that's some that's that's like a pearl in one of the pearls in the the story of the the Williams and Humbert long history of sherry sherry making for me final question really and um, yeah thinking 
up to date and, and potentially looking ahead, you know, I'm seeing a lot more, I guess, of super premium uh, sherry out there in the marketplace. And, uh, you know, I don't want to sort of go over the old ground that, that's been well covered around sherry being, um, you know, underpriced drink and it being sort of, you know, the darling of the trade because because it is it is an underpriced drink. But I want to, you know, kind of turn the tables a little bit and, and you know, just again, ask you to talk to one of your super premium um, offerings. You know, this is something that's, um, you know, a bit more special, you know, is a bit rarer potentially. Um, and it may be something that my listeners may not have come across if they're potentially used to, you know, buying the, the more readily available sherries that are out there. So, yeah, the, the door is open for you to talk to that. Okay, we have um, um, our uh, super premium range as you say is um would be our um solera especial range um uh um which um is a very very old uh range of of sherries from um uh, we have a dry sack 15 we have um uh halifa 30 year old dos cortados uh palo cortado which is a 20 year old and uh 20 year old cream sherry canasta which uh, canasta 20 which is a um very very old uh cream sherry from our canasta criaderas and soleras um we could specifically talk about um well for example um halifa which is our 30 year old vors amontillado um which was actually started its life as a manzanilla in san luca de barameda um, and the, that's where it has its initial stage of um, biological aging. And then we bring it to Jerez, and it's aged in um, in our bodega in Jerez in the Amontillado style. Um, so it's it has sort of, um, it's, I think it's quite unique in, in that sense that it's, it has a, a double geographical aging. Um, and um, that um, uh, Criadera and Solera is uh, the Criadera and Solera casks, I think now are probably well over 100 years old. Um, so you get all the goodness and nuances and that slight um, salty difference of, of flavors from the, its upbringing from the beginning in, in, in San Luca, its Manzanilla stage. And then it um, passes to uh, Almonte. That I love um, doing tastings with that with that wine, Lawrence, because it's um, you do pick it up. You do. The, I, I never say its origins until people have have tried it. But when you mention the slight salt, you know, people immediately react and say, "Yes, yes, yes, I have." Um, so it's that's that's a great that's a great uh, sherry wine uh, to uh, to show in uh, in in tastings. I think all you know all of the the older sherries um when you look at um sherries in in the in the the shelf um all the premiums are uh incredible wines th- through themselves i'm I'm not just talking now about Williams and Humbert I'm talking in general of the of the sherry bodegas I mean we always say between ourselves there's no bad wines there's no but um, and I think um, in the in the sherry trade we can all all the producers can be proud of the sherries we produce um, and I think people um, have a lot more open minds than they did before especially the younger generation um, and the whiskey drinkers where it does say on on the bottle and on the on the gift box you know aged in sherry casks um, um, perhaps we, the sherry producers and the cask producers, should um, insist that they speak a bit more of, mm. yes, aged in sherry casks, but which ones? Where is it from? How has the sherry cask been aged? Mm. Um, and and certainly with with because um, it's a it's a new field, Lawrence, that people mm. should know about, and it gives part of the history of the of the whiskey, of, um, uh, and it's a very very important part of it, the whiskey production. Um, um, into into to sherry, um, but I think sherry has such a, a, a um, an old and long heritage um, that people are coming back to it now. They are um, looking deeper into the things they they buy and they produce um, and and they consume. 
Um, they want to know what's behind the product, the story. Why are they paying that money? What part of that um, is included in the in the heritage and the upbringing of the product? Why is how has it arrived to this to this um, uh, quality? And I think um, um, Sherry has um, has had a very very long history, but I think it has a very very good future as well because. Um, People now are beginning to ask a lot more questions than before, and they want to know the details. And that's why people are listening to your, to your, uh, yeah. <laughs> to what we're doing yeah. today. You know, it's it's yeah. um, so um, so yeah, no, in any way we can help, yeah. we're, we're here. Thank you so much to Paula and to Edward for your time. In true Williams and Humbert style, this was an episode that spent time in Hereth and also in England. And I think across this episode really shows the diversity of what you're working on. You can, of course, see below for the website and main social media handles for Williams and Humbert. And while you're at it, why not head over to interpretingwine.com slash sherry to view the full Sherry Week series and to catch up on any episodes you might have missed. Next time on the Sherry Week series in episode 331, we head back to Jerez where I'll be getting a tour of Bodegas Urium. See you then.